Creating a Hobbit hole in Blender was actually the first tutorial I ever attempted to make for this channel back in June of last year. I was fairly new to Blender at the time and the project was a total failure, but I always said I would come back to the topic once I could do it justice. So here we are. I'm not going to hold your hand through this tutorial, but you shouldn't have any problem following along as long as you know the basics of Blender. Every Hobbit hole has a perfectly round door, so that's as good a place as any for us to start. Go into the front view and create a plane, flip it 90 degrees on the X axis so it's facing the camera. Add a circle with 64 verts and a radius of 0.7 meters. Flip the circle so that's also facing the camera. Scale the plane so it's just slightly larger than the circle. Then in edit mode, use Ctrl and R to add six vertical loop cuts under the plane. Use Ctrl and B on those loop cuts just to add a little bit of bevel. Select both the meshes in object mode and then tab into edit mode. Go to the mesh drop down and then select knife project. What that's gonna do is cut a hole in the shape of the circle into the plane. Delete the circle mesh and then go back into edit mode for the plane and you can press Ctrl and I which will select all the faces on the outside. You can then just delete those. Finally, we're gonna select the seven big faces and we're going to use E to extrude them out slightly and that's going to give us seven planks of wood. Now we've got a door, we need a frame to go with it. Add another circle and rotate it to face the camera again. Press E to extrude and then S to scale it out a little bit. Extrude it forward a little bit on the Y axis as well, just to give it a little bit of thickness. Then add a loop cut around the center of the mesh with Control R bevel that loop cut out and then add another loop cut in the middle of that. Move that middle loop cut back just a little bit on the Y axis and then use Ctrl B to bevel the middle loop again. Add about 20 cuts. If we go into the bevel options we can then add a custom profile. We can give that a little bit of a fancy design. Just play around with the curves until you get something that looks nice. Right click on the mesh to shade it smooth and then enable the auto smooth option which you'll find in the object properties tab. For the main building, add another plane in the front view and scale it to be the size you want the building to be. Add a load of vertical loop cuts and then select the top verts on the left and the right hand side. Enable proportional editing and just pull those down a little bit and you'll get this nice curve that goes along the top of the building. Make sure you press Z while you're moving those around so you lock everything to the Z axis. If your bottom verts get a little bit messed up, you can just select all of those and press S, Z, 0 then enter and that'll straighten all those out. You can just move them back into place. Okay, so we've got some weird shading problems going on now where the door and the wall overlap. So we're gonna have to cut another hole into the wall where the door's gonna be. Select the outer ring of verts on the door frame. Use Shift D to duplicate, then hit the P key to separate the circle into its own mesh. We're gonna use this circle to cut out a hole into the wall. Select the circle and the wall object in object mode, then in edit mode, just use mesh knife project tool, just like we did earlier to make the door. Select the top verts of the wall and then duplicate them into the own mesh. Extrude it up and out to make a lintel support beam along the top of the building. Add a cube and then shape that however you like to make some more vertical support beam going along the wall. Once you've got those into place, you're gonna to wanna to add a window. We'll cut that shape out using a circle and the knife project tool again, just like we've done earlier. Delete the circular face of the window and then select around the edges and push it in a little bit using the extrude tool. So far, so good. Let's add a little bit of depth to the room. Select all the out edges of the wall mesh and then just extrude it back a little bit and then press F to fill in the back face. Once that's done, we can start working on the landscape. Add a new plane to the scene and then scale it up so it's about four or five times wider than the house. And then move it down so it's aligned with the bottom of the wall. In sculpting mode, enable dino topple and start just sculpting in the shape of the hill. You can use symmetry for this if you want, especially at the start, just to save you some time. You can hold down shift to smooth out areas of the mesh, or you can hold down control and that'll push the mesh in instead of pulling it out. There's no real secret to this part, it's just trial and error. Just keep adding and removing little bits of clay until you get something that looks pretty good. If your mesh starts to look a little bit too blocky, try increasing the detail size in the dino topping settings. Once you're happy with the shape of the hill, go into the object data panel and use the remesh tool set to quad mode. I set the remesh to about 6,500 faces. I could have probably used a higher number, although you don't want to go too high with this or Blender will crash. Right click on the mesh and shade it smooth. After remeshing, you might notice that some areas of the hill are now poking through the walls. Just go back into the sculpt mode and push those parts back a little bit until you can't see them anymore. 
Right, we don't want a dirty great hill inside the house, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those faces that intersect the building. I did try using a boolean for this, but it didn't really work very well, so I found it was easier just to do it manually. Go into wireframe mode and select the whole area around the house. Press C, that'll put you into circle select mode, and then hold down shift and you can just go around and deselect any parts of the mesh that are outside of the house. Once you've got those selected, you can just press delete to get rid of those faces, and you should be left with a hole that roughly aligns with the uh, house mesh. You can also get rid of the whole back part of the mesh now since it's behind the hill it's not going to be visible to the camera. I already covered how to make grass in the Hollywood sign video that I made earlier on in the month but let's be honest nobody watched that video so I'm going to briefly go over it again. What we're basically going to do is we're going to add a plane and we're going to shape it with some loop cuts and a bit proportional editing so it looks like a blade of grass. You can place loads of these blades of grass manually but I find it's much easier to add two array modifiers, one on the Y axis one on the x-axis. Apply the array modifiers and then use the P key to separate each blade into its own mesh. Then you can select them all and do a search for random transform and if you play with the settings it'll start moving all the blades of grass around and you'll eventually get something that looks like a realistic clump of grass. Then you can just select them all again and use Control J to join every blade of grass back into a single object. You'll get a better result if you make several different bunches of grass to use in the render. I used I think five or six Six different grass meshes for my render. Apply all the transformations to the grass meshes with Control A apply all transformations then select them all all the different grasses and use Control G to add them into a group call that group grass. For the material on the grass you can just add a color ramp and plug it into the principal node then you can create a texture coordinate node and a noise node. Plug the object output of the coordinate node into the noise and then plug the noise into the color ramp. Then you can just give the color ramp a few different shades of like brown green and yellow and you'll get a nice bit of variation on the grass. You can also give the principal node a little bit of transmission and some subsurface scattering. That'll let just a little bit of light shine through the grass. By default subsurface scatterings made so it emulates skin and it gives everything kind of a pinkish red appearance. You can get rid of that by going into the subsurface radius and changing all the values to 0.1. Now we've got some nice looking clumps of grass, we need to add them to the hill. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a particle system to the hill and we're going to change the type to hair. We're going to set the render type to collection and then we're going to find that grass group that we've just created. Play with the scale and the scale random values until everything looks right and then turn on the checkbox at the top for advanced settings and that'll allow you to turn on the rotation checkbox. Then you can play with the rotation a little bit and add some random spin onto the grass. Make sure the origin for each piece of grass is at the bottom of the mesh, otherwise you'll end up with grass sticking halfway through the floor. Under the children's setting, turn on interpolated. What that's going to do is it's going to add random fake particles for every real particle. The default setting is 100, which is way too high. Turn that down to 30 or less. I think I use something like 12 for the final render, but it depends on how many grass particles you're actually going to use. If your viewport starts to slow down, you can reduce the number of viewport children that are shown. The grass should look okay now, but it's a little bit too artificial. So what we can do is we can introduce some more randomness by adding a texture to the particle system. Then just go into the texture panel so we can change the type on that. And we're going to change that to clouds. Under the drop down called influence, change the settings for density and hair length. That's going to add some patchy areas to the grass where it's either not as long or just not existent. We've got load of grass where we don't need it right now. Go into the object data panel and create a new vertex group. Back in the particle settings, go into the vertex group drop down and select whatever the one you've just called is made for the density. Now if we go into the weight paint mode, what we can do is we can just manually paint in the areas where the grass should appear. If you accidentally add some grass where you don't want it to be, you can change the brush mode type to subtract instead of add, then you can paint out areas of grass. For one final touch of realism, I created some little basic meshes of some daisies and I added those under the hill with a separate particle system. Since that hill does have some old patches and we can see areas where there's no grass, we're going to have to give it a soil material. You can select the whole mesh in edit mode, press U 
and then unwrap and that should do a good enough job of giving you a basic UV map. Then you're just going to need to add a quick soil texture. I use Substance Painter for most of my texturing for this scene but I'll link to a load of good textures that you can use in the description of this video. Unwrapping bent items like this lintel can be a little bit tricky in Blender since the grain of the wood won't follow the shape. I use this really good add-on called Text Tools that can fix that problem. It has a setting called Rectify and what that does is straightens out any selected UV island that you've got. Round shapes like the door can be a bit of a pain as well. What you're going to do there is just add a seam that goes around the bottom of the mesh and then unwrap it. You'll get this weird shape but you can select that and you can use the rectify setting in text tools again and straighten it out. For the window frames I just copied the door frame that I made earlier on, scaled it down and moved it into place. I selected the middle loop of vertices and I pressed F to fill those in to make a new face. I assigned a glass shader to that face and I used a noise node and a colour ramp plugged into the roughness just to give it some dirty marks and some smudges. Since the area inside the house is entirely lit by bounce lighting the glass is going to look really really noisy. We can reduce that noise with this really quick handy little node setup. Add a light path node and a math node. Set the math node to maximum and plug in is reflection ray into the top. Then plug in transparent depth into the bottom. Add a new mix node and a transparent shader with the transparent shader going into the bottom. Then use the output of the math node as the factor for the mix shader. What this basically does is it instructs Blender just to ignore all the bounces that are going on for the glass. It'll basically treat it like it's a transparent material but it looks like glass. As you can see here this node setup has much less noise than the normal glass shader. I thought the windows looked a little bit plain so I added some leading onto the glass. To make this just move the 3D cursor so it's in the centre of the window then create a new circle with 32 verts. Rotate the circle so it's facing the camera scale it down so it's aligned with just the inside of the frame. Starting on the top vert, select every fourth vert and then extrude in towards the center. Select two verts at a time and use F to fill in the middle area with some edges. Select that ring that you've just made, right click on it and subdivide it twice. You're going to want to make sure you've got the loop tool add-on enabled for this. It's a default add-on, you just need to turn it on. Do a search for the circle transform and that'll turn that inner ring back into a perfect circle. In object mode add a skin modifier. This is going to look crap at first but we can select all the verts in edit mode. We can use Control A and drag just to scale that in. Why is it Control Control A this time instead of Control S like everything else, I have no idea. But you can apply the skin modifier once you get to the right size and then you can use a level or two of a subdivision modifier just to smooth it out. Just give it a basic metal material and it'll look like lead on the window. So at this point I decided that the house needed a path. I made a long plane extended out in front of the door and then I just used the knife tool to cut in the shape of some basic flagstones into the mesh. Then I deleted all of the parts of the mesh that I didn't need and I extruded all those faces down to add a little bit of depth and make them look like rocks. I quickly used the uh, quad remesher and then I unwrapped them, added a level of subdivision or two, slapped a texture on there that looked like a rock and it was all done. Separate all the flagstones into their own mesh with the P key and then just manually align them them to the ground. To finish off the path I painted out a strip using the weight painting so that no particles would appear there. Then I just duplicated some of the grass meshes I made earlier on and I manually placed them in between the stones so it looked like grass was growing out in between the rocks. Then I went around all the bald areas of the house and I did the same thing just duplicating grass meshes, scaling them, rotating them until they filled out all the areas where that didn't have any grass. Unfortunately this part is a bit of a pain in the arse but there's no faster way to do it. So just throw on some relaxing music and prepare to spend the next 15-20 minutes just filling in these areas. I added another mesh into the background that would look like a hill and I added the same particle systems onto that mesh as the main landscape so it would have a little bit of grass. I wanted to add a little bit of separation between the foreground and the background so what I did is I put a plane in between the two and I extruded it out slightly just so it had a little bit of thick. Then I used the volume scatter node with the density set to low and you can do use that to fake a little bit of atmospheric perspective, it'll just give it a little bit of fog in between the two. I mirror flipped the whole scene 
screen at this point which is why the angle changes but I actually changed my mind about that decision later on. I wanted a tree in the scene so I used this tool called the sapling generator tool. It's a default add-on in Blender but you will have to probably enable it in the preference settings. I didn't really change the settings on the tree other than just to enable the leave setting to make sure that I had some leaves. Then it was just a case of UV unwrapping the leaves and aligning them to this texture that I downloaded from the internet. The tree trunk itself I think already has a decent UV map so you can just get a tree bark texture from the internet, slap that on it, you shouldn't have to unwrap anything yourself. If you're a member of my Patreon then you'll already have access to these plant pot meshes that I uploaded a while ago. Otherwise you're going to have to just make some plant pots yourself. The meshes come with a procedural terracotta texture texture that you can use to make pot look really weathered, you can even add some procedural moss. I stole a couple of plants from my mother's garden and I took some pictures of those so I could use the import as plain add-ons and bring them into Blender. I used the sapling add-on again to make some basic plants, this time I just lowered the number of branches. Then I applied a particle system to those branches and I used that to distribute the pictures of the plants that I took all over the mesh to make them look like bushes and plants. For the lighting I had been using this HDRI image. It looked pretty good but I didn't actually want it to appear in the background. What it did is I mixed the HDRI with the sky texture node and I used the is camera ray output of the light path node as the mix factor. What that setup basically does is it uses the light from the HDRI to light the scene but the HDRI itself is invisible to the camera and instead you'll just see the sky. One final step before rendering I just added an empty into the scene and aligned it with the door then in the camera settings I turned on depth of field and I selected the empty as the focal point then I just played around with the f-stop number until I had a little bit of blur in the foreground. I didn't want to use too much denoising on this scene because that can look really bad when you've got a lot of grass so I set cycles to a fairly high number 800 samples at 1440p. After a few tweaks in Photoshop I got a final render that looked like this. I didn't make too many changes but I did add a more saturated green colour to the door and I did a little bit of basic colour rebalancing. Overall I was really happy with this final result though like always I do wish I had a little bit more time just to play around with things and add some finishing touches to the render. If you're a subscriber to my Patreon you can download the blend file for this scene today. If you liked the video please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and I'll catch you next time.